Hey guys, welcome to episode 26 of my FIFA 16 full career mode. This is SFP. And that was a weird intro. I kind of just stumbled upon it that way, so I figured I'd save myself the embarrassment of pausing or making an awkward pause and just kind of going with the flow in here uh, we actually have an extra long episode for you guys today because this will be the end of the january transfer window so i kind of wanted to squeaking everything uh, that was left in the month of january into this one episode which includes two games and a couple of transfers here that i will show you guys later on Anyways, here we see that, according to the analyst of Player to Watch, is Moussa Dembele. And that is no surprise there, because he's been, overall, the best uh, striker that we've had in this season. If you guys remember in the previous one, uh, McCormick has been uh, more of an assist maker, or assister, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I did pose a counteroffer to a team that, uh, the name escapes me at the moment, but I'm pretty sure we will see it later on in this video and uh, for the right price I am willing to sell McCormick uh, he's you know in the he's about to hit 30 and so that's probably when he'll start declining I think he actually went up one overall so far which is pretty great because that just means he's gonna have a higher uh, value here and as we still see here guys I want to remind you guys that uh, starting November if you guys are very active on my channel I will be giving you shout outs uh, come the week of uh, Thanksgiving here in the States. Uh, I'll give you guys more information as we actually do uh, get to the next game here. But this is actually an FA Cup game. So the importance of us getting the victory is great. And here we see that uh, West Bromwich Albion still has a really good opportunity here. They had one previously that kind of just swayed away. And this one is another opportunity that they had. Not exactly on frame, but a good attempt nonetheless. And here we're going to see Dembele, who was called the player to watch. And we can see there why he was the player to watch, because he has a great shot. And that was a good save there from the goalkeeper. Excuse me. And here we see McCormick squeaks by his defender, sneaks by, he sneaks by another one. He still has the ball, he's going to go for the pass, I know it. He tries to find Christensen, Christensen goes with the vault, with the half turn there. And he almost gets it, it was a great shot, a great opportunity, a great team effort there, but the ball was just slightly off frame. And here we have... Carney who's going for the shot. And what a great shot and a great goal. That is the goal we've been waiting for. And we take the lead here towards the end of the first half. And again, right from the throw in here, we get a pass. We get a pass back. And Carney goes for it. And he gets the shot. He blasted past the goalkeeper. And what a great effort from the team. That is a team goal if I saw one, guys. And what a great strike there from our right midfielder. And they will put it back in play. And I believe uh, we will have this last free kick here attempt. And that will be the end of the first half, guys. We get a 1-0 lead at the half. Something good to look forward to come the second half. If only we can keep it. And also avoid that darn uh, replay game. Because I do not... I'm not a big fan of replay games. So I'll even prefer losing, to be honest, instead of playing a replay it's just a waste of time, and here we have to embed it with a great shot, and what a close opportunity, a nice passer from our left back, uh, Tim Ream there, but Dembele should have done better than that, he had no pressure on him, he had all the time in the world, and he got a little hasty there. Here we see another opportunity, McCormick goes for the shot, and it goes in, but as you can see there, the celebrations for nothing because it was offsides, and when this actually happened guys, I was waiting, I thought, I felt I was offsides. And so I held my shot there for a while, expecting the, f the linesman to uh, raise his flag there, and he didn't. And I figured at some point I might as well just take the shot, and I did. And I'm a little frustrated because they should have called it beforehand. And 
And you we see that we actually get fouled on. And here, the uh, excuse me, the left, well, I think left back here, Christian Gamboa. Excuse me, the right back, Christian Gamboa, gets a yellow card here. The Costa Rican, who have actually been very interested in picking up at some point in this career mode. I think he's a quality right back. I was very impressed with what he did in the World Cup. Uh, so maybe he'll be a feature signing at some point in the series. And here we have what could be the last opportunity here for this game. We still have the ball, and that actually is it, guys. We actually get the 1-0 victory here at the FA Cup, and we live to fight another day. And that it is that is it for the first game of this episode. And we see here the results from other uh, games here. And we have a transfer offer from McCormick yet again. And this time from below, uh, Bala, Balagna. And I know that's not how you pronounce it, but for some reason my brain's not working. Um, but I will counter offer again, just like I did the other one with $5.5 million. And here we see that Sassuolo has agreed uh, to match that price. So Sassuolo, which I believe is an Italian team. Uh, correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong, but I believe it's in talent team. And here I'm going to put Grimer in uh, for the Richards, or the player Richards who just got a loan transfer. And so far, so good, guys. Uh, the training is going uh, okay, I guess. It could have been better. And here, I'm actually going to uh, fix the transfer budget here because I'm looking to make a lot more signings. Uh, so this is in the end, guys. We're going to basically use up all our slots, if I'm not mistaken. And here we have a youngster here, a right winger Munir. Now we don't play with a with a winger set up here, but he is still a quality youngster, and so I'm hoping to get him on a two year loan and have kind of a set fee, future fee for him. I mean, three million. I'm pretty sure that's that'll be a good offer because he's already more than three million right now. At least his worth. So I figured it'd probably be the best option, and I'm pretty sure we'll have three million next uh, next two transfer. Excuse me, next two seasons from now. And here we see that, unfortunately, Sassuolo and McCormick have broken down. And so he will not be going there. But luckily, uh, Bologna has uh, decided to match it as well. So hopefully, he will go with them. And these are the final reports. Transfer offer. And this time, it's for my left winger. And as you can see here, uh, we actually do get the offer accepted from Barcelona. So Munir is actually going to come here on loan. Uh, with the option to buy for a future fee. And that is very exciting. I think that's been the biggest offer I have so far. And here, I'm going to tempt this offer as well. I'm going to go for the counter offer, and I believe I'm going to go for $5 million. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to go for $5 million. That might be uh, two, it might have not been exactly the best uh, option there because I know he can grow up to level 78. And so maybe uh, I went a little cheap there. But uh, considering he's actually getting an offer, I figured I might as well just take it. And thanks in part to the uh, transfers that I've done, I now have a more of a budget to make other transfers. And here I'm going to go for the other winger here from Barcelona. And this time, I will do the same thing. I will actually get a two-year loan, and I will have a set amount future fee. And for this, I'm going for $2.5 million. <laughs> Which, again, would be a steal for both teams. And finishing off Barcelona's uh, raid here that I'm doing, I'm also going to go for Grimaldo. And I'm going to offer, uh, let's say, $9 million. Excuse me, nine nine hundred thousand, nine nine million, nine hundred thousand dollars, and let's see what uh, they will do. Actually, I think I actually stupidly go for the loan offer as well, but we'll see how they respond to that. And they have decided to reject it, which is unex is unexpected in my part, but whatever. And here we see that uh, Burnley have accepted the counter offer, so they're actually going to proceed to go into talks with the player here. And so since they kind of rejected it, I figured, you know what, I have enough in my uh, budget to actually go for this player. So after uh, I, uh, excuse me here, after 
thinking about it and making the proper adjustments as you can see there now I have a transfer budget I'm actually gonna go and see if I can actually just buy them straight off the bat and I think that's what I do unless I stupidly go no I don't I actually had some brains here and I went straight for the 900 million offer as you can see there Barcelona said the transfer offer is unacceptable but they said they are willing to go with the Sandro option. So welcome, Sandro, to our team here. And now we're going to fix this and see. They want to go for $1.7 million. I figure let's see if I can maybe just offer one of these players that I'm not really using to kind of sweeten the deal here. And I believe I'm going to go for, uh, let's see here. I believe it's Tunnicliffe, but let me see. Which player I go for? No, I go for uh, Matilia. Or is it Vozer? Okay, it's Vozer. And let's see what Barcelona thinks about that offer now. And again, transfer offer unacceptable. Which means we're probably going to have to pay the 1.7 million, which isn't too big of a deal. So I'll, uh, let's see what I do here. And now I'm just gonna go for the one point. I'm gonna go for 1.5 million and uh, take Vozer out of here if they're not gonna. Because I'm not gonna pay that much money and Vozer. That's ridiculous. Vozer I think has some more value than that, so I'm not gonna waste my time with that. But now I'm also gonna strengthen the goalkeeper position because uh, our two or three of our goalkeepers, one is on loan right now. They are actually on the wrong side of 30, but considering they're goalkeepers, they'll have a uh, lengthier time with the team however I don't have very good young prospects as goalkeepers so I figured why not bring in the Mexican here who is second uh, second string actually and he's the backup for Ike Casillas so uh, the kid must be good if he's playing second fiddle to Ike Casillas even though you might admit that maybe Casillas' time as a quality goalkeeper may be uh, out the window here but I don't know let me know what you guys think about Ike Casillas you think he still has it do you think he should be the starting goalkeeper for Spain still, or do you think it's time for him to move on and have De Gea uh, or someone else take up the mantle there of the starting position from the ex-Galactico? Anyways, guys, while I'm taking advantage of this, I want to let you guys know that um, here at the States, we celebrate Thanksgiving, and so for any of you guys, international viewers watching, uh, Thanksgiving is usually uh, the fourth Thursday of the month of November. Now, I actually have a lot of time that week of Thanksgiving, which would be from the 23rd to the 27th. So, as you see here, the player debuts, which is amazing. I'm very excited for this new feature. Uh, but anyways, going back on what I was saying, uh, for that week, I'm going to do something very cool, which is I'm going to thank you guys for being so supportive of my channel. And I will be giving shout-outs to the top 14 uh, most active people on my channel. Um, if there's less than 14, then I'll figure out how to fix that and maybe give people, certain people twice the amount of shoutouts or whatever. But anyways, guys, so starting of the month of November, if you are active on my channel and if you're one of the top 14 active people on my channel, I will give you a shout-out. Not in a shout-out video, but in an actual video. So, um, you know, it's a love-hate thing with the shout-out videos. I understand why people do it. But in my opinion, I feel it would be more beneficial for you guys if I give you a shout-out on this video because people will actually watch this video uh, going for the game and they'll be like, you know what, SFP mentioned this other guy who, whose YouTube channel seems kind of interesting, so why not check him out as well? And so, basically, I'm saying 14 because I will actually be doing double upload videos that day, for uh, one for the Barcelona career mode and one for the Fulham career mode as well. And here we see the first strike here from Brentford. What a great opportunity. A very quick one, actually. It kind of took me off by surprise there. Um, but, uh, like I said, guys, I will make, I'll make i be making this announcement in every single video until we hit November. Um, so, just bear in mind that. For those of you guys who are watching, remember, just uh, stay active. The, most active. the more active you are, the better your chances. And here we have Monid with the first opportunity here. And we see that he actually puts a little bit too much on that. Not enough aim there but a nice taken shot as well anyways I'm testing out these new youngsters here and I know the jersey numbers are not the ideal ones but I will be changing that at some point in this video 
excuse me, in this series. And here we see a strike here, and I think I got a deflection there from Stearman. A slight deflection, and that's going to be a corner kick that I don't think we'll see because nothing happened. And here we have Joda from Brentford, who loses the ball, and that'll be the end of the first half, guys. A 0-0 draw. Not exactly what I was looking for, but considering I am actually testing out a few more pieces here, uh, I think it's been very well so far. So when he looks a little bit exhausted, I'm going to take him out and put Smith in. And I believe that is the only change I will make. Now, Mooney is going to be on the bench. And maybe Smith will show it how, show him how it's done. Here we have Dembele. Dembele goes for the shot. And the shot is great. What a nice driven shot there in the last couple of minutes of the game here, guys. If you see the clock, we are actually in the extra time portion of the second half. So, if you guys have noticed, actually, we have a winning streak going which is very very exciting uh, last a uh, week I know I was kind of flip floppy and it was a roller coaster ride I'm trying to get through these episodes because I wasn't exactly having any momentum or any kind of streak going but so far we've actually won every single game or at least we're winning right now let's see if I jinx it in the last couple of seconds but uh, also we haven't conceded a goal which is pretty awesome too I think my form of play in the Barcelona career is kind of translating, or it's it's going to this one as well, which is very, very exciting, guys. And I know you just used very twice, and so I do apologize for my inability to create sentence fragments, or fragment and sentences, whatever you want to call it. And here we are in the deadline, and we see that some of our players got scouted, which... It's fine because right now we haven't exactly had the best of luck scouting. And maybe that's just because I'm a little bit picky. And speaking about picky, I've been looking for a striker because with McCormick gone, I don't think Dembele can do it by himself. Now, I did have Josh Gap, but he's a winger who can't play striker. But I figure why not just uh, even the odds here and make me or make my team more uh, have more depth here. And so I'm going to go for the Portuguese striker, Andre Silva. And as you can see here, our transfer is unacceptable. And apparently unacceptable as well for uh, the goalkeeper. And as for acceptable here, we do get an okay from uh, Barcelona here for the last player that we're going to squander off his team. And I believe this will be the first actual transfer of this season, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm going to go for squad rotation because I think... I still want to use uh, Tim Ream as my main left back, but with all the potential that Grimaldo has, I might have to change that. Maybe I'll, I'll put um, Tim Ream as a center back, but we'll see about that when we get to that bridge. And now they say they want uh, 2.1 million. And I was actually going to sneak in just 2 million, but considering we're actually running out of time and I do need him to accept, I'm actually just going to go for whatever they ask for. And here I'm actually going to see if I can maybe sweeten the deal here with a player. And I go for Woodrow. So maybe Woodrow plus 2 million will be enough to persuade Porto to give us Andres Silva. And here we see again transfer for unacceptable for Andres Silva. But we do get a transfer acceptable for... Raul from Porto and apparently Grimaldo wants a bigger role so let's take care of this first for Raul Gudinho and we're gonna go for 7 million and I believe he's gonna be sporadic let me see if he accepts that a role position here at the club as for Grimaldo remember we did put him as a squad rotation player so let's give him a more important role and this one would be important role <laughs> important team player here so hopefully he accepts that because I don't see him as a crucial, uh, at least not yet. Maybe in the future he'll ask for the crucial um, the crucial status role here in the squad. But right now I think I think important uh, player sounds like a good enough deal for him to accept. So here now we're going to go to the next hour and we're going to get four notifications. Hopefully they're positive ones. And we get an offer for Pringle, which I'm willing to go for uh, let's see let's go for 600,000 and see if we can uh, persuade Charlton Athletic to actually go for that amount here 
And as we see here, Andres Silva has, or Porto has accepted the transfer offer for Andres Silva. Now we get to talk to the player. And he wants 14 million. And I think he's going to be an important player. So let's go with that and submit the offer. And hopefully he'll accept straight off the bat. Because he's definitely going to be an important player here. And he's going to be an automatic starter. Here for Gudinho, I believe he wants a greater role. So let's go for the squad rotation. We'll see if he accepts that and just keep everything to the player's demands. And here Grimaldo has accepted. And so now we are going to accept that offer. And welcome to the team, Alejandro Grimaldo. And that is the first transfer of this. Remember, I'm limited to three transfers, three loans, and uh, three, I guess, pre-contract players. I've already used up two, so I still have one pre-contact player if I would like to. But considering um, those are going to be taken off my actual transfers for next transfer season, I figured, no, I'm just going to play it safe and maybe just keep that one for something that I might need. And we actually get accepted. Uh, and Silva accepts the uh, terms to the negotiation. So he is the second player coming on here. And I believe we still have to work with uh, Raul Gudinho here to see if we can persuade him to join our club here from Porto. And here I'm going to sweeten the deal here. Maybe go for 10... Uh, 10,000, excuse me. Ten thousand and a squad roll. So let's see if we can actually get that and persuade him that way. And yes, he does. Raúl Gudinho will be the last transfer of this transfer window. Remember that I'm basically maxing out all of my options here. Uh, so I'm going to steady this new transfer budget so that if we need to uh, renew any contracts, we'll be able to do that without any. <clears throat> difficulty so i've used up all my three transfers for this season <clears throat> i've used up all my three loans for this season and i've used up two pre-contracts so that i believe will be the end of that and we will not have any more uh, transfers happening this transfer season so i think <clears throat> excuse me i don't know what my throat is doing right now but i think we're good enough to actually um to compete and maybe push for that second place but we still actually can get first place which is pretty amazing <laughs> but i think i've made a, a good enough team that we can compete in all fronts at the moment or at least be able to to hold our own here <clears throat> as you can see there the usual uh notification that the transfer window has ended which i don't know why they always do that we don't need it it's very self-explanatory and here I'm going to go with this squad report because it's the beginning of a new month, which is February. We see here that certain players have grown. A few players have decreased, and apparently Chris Williams is unhappy, so we're going to probably address that at some point later in the series. Hopefully we can get him up to being happy again. As we hear there, we have Andre Silva, who's already, I think, growing as well. Monir has grown by one already. Which is, uh, I'm so amazed at how fast these youngsters go, guys. Anyways, and we do have Julian Green, who is part of our uh, loans as well. Anyways, that will be it for this video, guys. Please follow me on Twitter at SFP Soccer Show. Follow me on Twitch at SFP Gaming. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button to stay updated with the videos. And remember that the next video will be coming up tomorrow. So until next time, guys, peace out.